Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here, bringing you guys another vlog. Not making the video the video that I wanted to make, but I, I feel like it needs to be addressed because I'm a Pacers fan, okay? I want to talk about this because there are, seem to be a lot of people who are walking around with an attitude like somebody pissed in their fucking Cheerios today because the Pacers decided to tank. I have seen so many people bitching, oh, the integrity of the team is in question now, the head coach needs to be fired, this person needs to be fired, nothing's the same anymore, playoff experience matters, yada, yada, yeah, shut the fuck up. I am so tired of hearing everybody talk about this. I have heard fucking people who are supposedly experts on the fucking situation talk about this. It just doesn't make any sense to be mad that the Pacers tanked at the end of the season this year. It does not make any sense at all. Okay? The reason I say this is because the Pacers exceeded expectations by a wide margin this year. They were only projected to win 23 games. 23 fucking games. I said they could win more than 30, and I was right, okay? Like, how many total wins did they get on the year? I think they, they approached 40, if I'm correct. They, they won 35 games, okay? And if you look at the, the schedule and the results, in the last 15 games of the season, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. In the last 15 games of the season, they had to play Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Toronto, Boston, Atlanta, Dallas, Milwaukee, Cleveland, New York, New York. So in their last 15 games of the season, 10 of them came against playoff teams. Now, I want to ask you all a serious question. Do you think we could have won those games? Do you think we could have won those games by a significant enough margin to justify going for the playoffs? Because teams generally start talking about tanking after the All-Star break, mid the midway point in the season. And usually teams don't actually start tanking until about 18 to you know 20 to 18 games are left in the season. Out of the last 15 games, 10 of them were against playoff teams. Two of them were against Milwaukee. Two of them were against the Knicks. One of them was against Cleveland. One of them was against Dallas. I think two of them were against Boston. And we are really mad that we decided we're probably not going to make the playoffs if we have to play those guys. So we might as well pack it in early and get the best draft position that we can get. People are really mad about that. People are really fucking pissed that we decided to do that. And I have to ask why people are mad about that. Because to me, it seems like people are putting the cart before the horse here when we talk about playoff experience. Because there's a lot of people talking, playoff experience, playoff experience. Playoff experience doesn't really fucking matter when you consider the fact that in two years, there's probably only going to be three or four players on this team left from this current roster. And those four players are Tyrese Halliburton, Ben Matherin, Aaron Neesmith, Andrew Nemhard, and even Miles Turner, we'll throw him in there, five players, but even Miles Turner appears to be expendable. I don't think Buddy Yield is going to be here. Maybe he will be if he learns to play defense, because according to Rick Carlisle's exit conference, Buddy Yield can stay if he learns to play defense, which he hasn't learned to play defense yet, so I don't think that's ever going to come. Uh, maybe he comes back eventually at some point in the, the distant future on a, on a cheaper deal just to play with Tyrese Halliburton, but the fact of the matter is, everybody else on this roster that I did not name is expendable. They are players that we can let walk, we can trade, we can do whatever. It simply does not make sense for us to make a playoff push when we clearly don't have a roster that is ready to make a serious playoff push. We are a team that needs help at the power forward spot. We're a team that needs help on defense. We're a team that needs help on rebounding. We are a far fucking cry from being a playoff, a legitimate playoff team, or even being a legitimate contending team. We are far, far away from such things. 
When you look at other teams, other teams have a bona fide superstar player. And you could argue that we have one, or, or at least a, a bona fide star player. Like, a, a what? Like I guess you could say Tyrese Halliburton is like our superstar player. And I think he's definitely going to be that. But it's just the idea. We need to put more around him. We, we need, honestly, we're in a draft where the Pacers appear to really want either Taylor Hendricks or Jaris Walker. Those are the two guys that the Indiana Pacers are going to be going after. I'm telling you right now, those are the guys they're going to go after. If Jaris Walker's not there and Jaris Walker goes in the top five, guess who we're picking at seven? Taylor Hendricks, most likely. Okay, he's six foot eight and is a three and D guy. That's what we need. Three and D. Three and D, six, eight, who can play the power forward position. That's what we need. And when when I see people who are so upset over this, I think to myself, okay, so you're you're really worried that uh, you're really worried about a first round playoff basketball exit. That's that's what you're worried about. If you're somebody who is pissed that this team did not make the playoffs, you're you are literally crying and bitching about a first round exit. Maybe even a play in exit because that's what we were fighting for was a play in spot. So you're worried about a play-in game. One game. No, may, no, two games. Maybe two. That's what you're worried about. You are worried about a push for the playoffs for a team that is simply not there yet. They're very close. They're close to being a playoff team. I'll, I, 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 if you want my honest opinion, after this offseason and with the draft, we could very much be a playoff team next season. If we keep drafting the way that we drafted last year and, you know, getting steals and Andrew Nembhard and getting Benedict Mathurin, which I I told everybody we're going to get Benedict Mathurin last year. But it's just the idea this team is not ready yet. And people are acting like, oh, well, Buddy Heald is Reggie Miller and uh, Tyrese Halliburton is Chris Paul and Benedict Mathurin is Kobe Bryant and Miles Turner is fucking Shaquille O'Neal. Like, I I don't understand this. I do not understand why Pacers fans get so fucking bent out of shape around a, 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 a rebuilding basketball team. Like, oh, like, I get it. The owner came out and said, we will never do a rebuild. Okay, so we're retooling. People are mad that we traded Malcolm Brogdon because he won sixth man of the year. Do you not understand that we were obviously in a retool slash rebuild situation and Malcolm Brogdon got injured all the fucking time? You know why Malcolm Brogdon won sixth man of the year in Boston? Because he wasn't asked to carry the fucking team. That's why. I'm so tired of this, man. I am so tired of fan stupidity. It is unreal. With every sport, not just with the Pacers, not just every every team, every sport in general, I am tired of idiotic takes. Because if we never traded Malcolm Brogdon, we would have just lost him in free agency. Like, there was a very, very low likelihood that Malcolm Brogdon was coming back. And honestly, his contract wasn't even that great to start with. Like, we paid him a lot of money to come to Indiana, and half the time he was riding the bench because he was injured. Honestly, Aaron Naismith, I think, is going to be a great player. Jordan Wara, if I said that correctly, it looks like he's going to be a solid player. Like, we're building something. Can you just trust the fucking process? Can we get, can Joel Embiid, can we get a Joel Embiid in here? Just trust the process. Like, people are so mad that we did not make the playoffs. Like, it's, it's over with. Stop bitching. Oh, Rick Carlisle needs to be fired. The front office needs to be fired. We need to trade this player. We need to do that. Like... I'm tired of hearing about it. I am tired of hearing of uh, from people, specifically Pacers fans, okay? I am tired of hearing Pacers fans bitch about not making the playoffs. You have made the playoffs almost every fucking year for, what, the last half decade? And we get a couple years where we don't make it, and everyone's like... <laughs> Ah, no, we didn't make the playoffs. Ah. Like, that's how people are fucking acting. And I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. I understand that we have always been a competitive basketball team. I understand that we have pretty much always made the playoffs. But you know what also I've noticed? We've always made the playoffs and pretty much have always been a fucking first round exit. Aren't you people tired of being a first round exit team? 
Like, when was the last time we made made it past the second round? 2013? And, and people are really, like, upset about this. We have been a first-round exit for uh, the better, almost a decade now. Almost. And, what well, actually, 2013 is 10 years I've been out of high school. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, like... I, I, it just, for, yeah, a decade now, we have pretty much been a first-round exit. And people are really mad that we're not going to be a first-round exit again this year. Give me a fucking break. I am so tired of this, man. Like, it really makes me want to be a fan of a different team. It really does. Because, like, I listen to these people plead their case, and it doesn't make sense. It, it really doesn't. Like, why strive to get a shittier draft position... Okay, when you need help at a certain position, when you need help on, on, on multiple fronts, why are you worried about a playoff position when we need help on defense, we need help on shooting, we need help on rebounding, we need help off the bench? Okay, that's four fucking things we need help with. We need uh, 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 another, like, primary scorer outside of Tyrese Halliburton, and I think Benedict Matherin's gonna be that guy, but can we just calm down? Because I just think it doesn't make sense that people are upset about this when we're clearly not ready, and when we can get a guy like Taylor Hendricks in the draft, or Jarese Walker, we got three first round picks this year, so we could get Taylor Hendricks, we should we could get some bench help, we could maybe get another decent backup center if Daniel Ties doesn't come back, and I don't I don't I don't think he is. I, I I don't know what his contract looks like, but we have a lot of cap space to work with in the offseason. So chill the fuck out. Okay? There's there's potential we draft somebody completely different in the draft. And then we go out and sign, I don't know, a, a Thomas O'Brien as our backup center. Or maybe even our starting center if we decide to trade Miles Turner at some point. Like, the possibilities for this team are endless. Okay? We have cap space and we have draft picks. And we have the best three-point shooter in the league on, on our team who can, as percentage-wise and attempt-wise and three-points made-wise. Okay, We have the best three-point shooter in the league at the current point in time on our roster, and that's all that he's good at. We have a center on our team who, yes, just had a career year, but does, still can't average a double-double if his life depended on it. So it's just the idea. We have a lot of pieces that can be moved. There's teams that are clearly doing a rebuild, Toronto being one of them. There, that once Gary Trent Jr. and Fred Van Vliet leave, that's it. I think the Washington Wizards are going through a rebuild. The Portland Trailblazers could likely be going through a rebuild if Damian Lillard decides that he wants out. There are endless possibilities here. The Chicago Bulls roster is a fucking disaster. So, like, just calm down, okay? Wait, 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 wait if you, if you want to be upset next year that we don't make the playoffs, that's a little more understandable. But this year being upset that we didn't make the playoffs makes no fucking sense to me. It really doesn't. We knew we were playing for a draft pick. Did we or did we not fully fucking understand that at the beginning of the year? Okay, then the problem was, you know what, you know what the problem is? The team started off the season hot. They started off playing really well. And then we got delusions of grandeur. That's what happened. Our fan base was like, oh, we got rose-colored glasses, and we were like, oh, we could make the playoffs again. And what? Be a first-round exit? Please. Save it for next season. After this offseason, depending on how this offseason goes, for all I know, we could make a, a huge free agent signing or a huge trade with a team for, I don't know, Pascal Siakam might be available. You know, Jeremy Grant's going to be a free agent. The, the possibilities are endless here. And Jeremy Grant had a damn good season for Portland. So it's just the idea of just calm down trust the process, let's let our guys develop a little bit, give them one more year before we start to saying, oh, this guy needs to be traded, okay? Just give them some time. I know that's hard for Pacers fans to do because we expect every player to be like fucking Paul George and Reggie Miller out the gate, and we our, our ideal draft prospect is fucking Kawhi Leonard all the time, but it's just the idea, just give it time, let it happen, and if you want to be mad next season, fine. Be bad next season, even though I feel like that's a little more justified than it is this season. 
just give it time. Let's see what the offseason brings. And next season, then if you want to be mad when we would whenever we do whatever we do this offseason, hell, you could even be mad before the season starts because we didn't do shit in the offseason. So there's you have way more to be mad about in this offseason coming up than you will have had for this past season. I'm just going to tell you that now. You are more likely to be even more pissed about the offseason than you should be about the season we just had. So, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. Like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more. I'm the Fast Break Report, and I'm out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.